So we had a look in a previous video at how you could actually input a route using waypoints on your chart plotter. Garmin give us three quick route options that we can use on the touchscreen. So if I find a destination, somewhere I want to go to, I can, let's say the harbour entrance here in Poole, I can touch the screen and straight away it's given me the ability to put waypoint in, but it's also given me route to go to and auto guidance. So I'm going to start by hitting the go to button as a demonstration. And you can see that the chart plotter has tried to take us directly from our current navigation system fix to the point that I programmed in. Now that wouldn't work as a straight line, so it's going to take us straight through the channel at funny angles, straight across the peninsula at sandbanks. In fact, we wouldn't have even got that far because it's trying to take us through the car park here at the marina. So that would be a great option if you were heading into a port from offshore in a straight line and you knew the water between you and the port was safe. But we're going to just stop the navigation using the little stop navigation button in the top left here. And I'm going to look at the second option. So let's scroll back down to that harbour entrance, poke the screen, and this time choose route to. So now it's actually put the endpoint in, but as I move the screen around, it allows me to work backwards and add each of the turns in reverse. So you're kind of putting the route in in reverse, add each turn, and I'm choosing each turn point where I'm going to have a boy or visual reference nice and close. So good practice for placing waypoints on the screen. And because I'm going to be going out, I'm trying to draw this route to get to the harbour entrance, I'm keeping my route on what will be effectively my starboard side of the channel. So I can actually work it all the way back here. And there's a little bit of a confusing bit at the entrance to the North Channel here, if you know Pool Harbour. Um, ooh, do I put two in or do I straight line it? If I straight line, it's going to take me through that buoy. So I'm going to have to do a bit of a, a double turn here. There we go. And I can almost go in a straight line right the way back to here. I'm going to leave it there because actually I know off the top of my head how to get to this point. So now if I press done, straight away it started to navigate that route. That's great. Look at that. Obviously, I'm not going to follow the first bit here because that would take me again through the car park. But once I get to the North Channel, it will then actually guide me through all those different turns to the harbour entrance. Stop panning. We mentioned it in a previous video, but the extra data bar here is showing you at the top distance to the destination, the harbour entrance, how far off course I am as I go along, what bearing I should be following to that first point, the distance to that next point, and then it'll give me two extra time references as we start moving. It can't give me those until we start moving. It doesn't know how fast we're going yet. So I'm going to stop that navigation again. Do I want to save this route? So it does give me the option to save this as a route for future reference. I'm going to say no. The nice thing here is that it hasn't left any of those waypoints, any of that detail on the screen. So if I was just doing this as a quick one off, that would be great. Press stop panning and Let's go back to that harbour entrance again, one last time. For the third time, I'm going to press the auto guidance button. And now it has to have a little bit of a, a think, it didn't take long, and it's come up with its own automatic route. Now you can see that there are some similarities with the one I programmed in. It's taken us kind of past this red boy. It didn't take us right the way over here. It's cut us down this side, which if you were heading out, arguably is putting you on the the wrong side of the channel. If there was oncoming traffic and you were following this, that might be a problem. It's also taken us, or it will try and take us, outside the channel here. Again, this might be a safe route. It's relying upon its understanding of depth that we need. So there are settings here that have accounted for our depth. If we hadn't set the plotter up correctly, this would be a problem. And um, back over here, again, it's kind of shortcut through the shallows and it's taken us over on the, what would be the port side of the channel if we were heading out. Uh, that would be an issue if there were vessels coming in. So the auto guidance route is great that it takes a lot of that work out of what we're doing, but it does unfortunately give us some deviance from what we consider some best practice when we're navigating. So you'd have to be a little cautious and maybe actually hit the adjust path button to move all of those different legs. 
I'm going to cancel that now, but obviously if you wanted to, you could follow that. So three different ways of quickly setting up those routes on the chart and, and, and then having something to follow.